गुड आफ्टरनून मैं चल पेश के घोष गिवन यू फ्री लेक्चर्स दिस इज अनदर टॉपिक दिस इज केमिकल रेडियक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट रेगुलेशन यू मे बी थिंकिंग हाउ इट इज कनेक्टेड टू सीवियर एंड और कनेक्टेड टू डिजास्टर्स हैव यू सीन इट हाउ एनी एक्सीडेंट टेकिंग प्लेस यूर नेवर हुड बिकॉज ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट During transport, suppose a chlorine tanker get toppled, who will get affected? You, those who are staying nearby, those who are traveling in the roads. Like if radioactive contamination happened during transport, you do not know you will get contaminated. So this is a got very important topic. That's why you have chosen. Let us see the mind map. What I am going to teach you and what we are going to learn it. <clears throat> see, you will see the frequently asked questions on this uh, chemical transport regulations, radioactive regulations, chemical uh, transport, then Indian regulations for chemical transport, then how to avoid the accident and checklist statistics. See Indian regulations for the radioactive material and summary comparison between the chemical and radioactive. I am not including the biological, but biological transport is very easy. You will be the transporters, and you will get contaminated. And if you travel through here, you will take the material from one country to another. That doesn't need any carrier. So this is the mind map. <coughs> See, this is of course uh, you have seen many of the tankers and trucks going uh, in your neighborhood, and uh, this uh, symbol is there, dangerous course going, and flammable, so many things, toxics they will write in the container. So this UN classification is known to you. This is very important. You have to remember it. This all nine classes, and. Seven coming under uh, radioactive materials. It has been specially put it in the symbol. Ah, uh, what are the dangerous goods? Dangerous goods can be explosive, flammable, toxic, radioactive, corrosive, harmful in some other way to humans, animals, or the environment. The environment include either goods in transport, the transport vehicles, buildings, soils, roads, air, waterway, and nature in general. The empty container, I put it red color. The empty container and the packages of dangerous goods can present the same hazards as the chemical substance or product. They Contained and should also be regarded as a dangerous. So, empty container, if it is lying somewhere, that also should be regarded as dangerous. Code. So, definition is clear. According to the data from Ministry of Road, Transport, and Highway, there are over 5,000 accidents involving hazardous material in 2021 alone. Now you understood why abuse, why it is required, resulting more than 1,000 deaths. These are all statistics. May be more. What this is reportable by ministry. So there are so many things are not reported. So, 50% of the transported goods are dangerous. United Nations statistics show that half of the goods transported belong to the category of dangerous goods. Petroleum product is also dangerous because flame. But road and railway transport are also significant. For example, 85% of the chlorine which is one of the very dangerous chemicals is transported by rail and road also. Large amount of other highly dangerous goods such as hydrochloric acids, sulfuric acids, 
sulfur dioxide, nitric acid, phenol, methanol, are transported regularly. You will not be seeing it. But if something happens, road accident, they may find a way to the environment. Small drain make a river. That is known to you how it can happen. Major accident cause extensive damage, but that is not all. We forget easily that small amount of oil, gasoline, battery acid and refrigerator fuel are released to the environment and daily. Even small but frequent waste from sheep, household, cars, agriculture increase the load to the environment. For example, one liter of oil, I'll keep it in mind, one liter of oil can under unfavorable circumstances spoil one lakh liter of drinking water. Think of that. A spill of hydraulic fluid from a truck can lead environmental damage. Recommendation and instruction for handling, storage, transport of dangerous goods must be clear, unambiguous to avoid harmful and dangerous circumstances. So that's why small drain can make it so one liter oil can spoil one lakh liter of water. See, sometimes they will be cleaning the trucks and that water goes, that oil goes, chemical goes where? In the water body and they will be cleaning the floor and floor up here. Right? These are the pictures. A small amount of chemicals leading to the drain going ultimately to the water body and to the environment may cause a environmental degradation over a period of time. So common hazard in handling chemicals are of course risk of explosion, fire and smoke, chemical hazards, health hazards, poisoning, burn, allergy, damage to the environment. Many companies allow uncontrolled access by diesel engines. I am reading it and uh, listen it. Uncontrolled access of diesel engine, believing that they cannot ignite gas or vapor. This is incorrect. This is totally incorrect. How? Four tons of hot flammable hydrocarbon leaked out of a plant while maintenance work was in process, a diesel engine was in the area, the flammable vapor was sucked inside the air inlet of the engine started two days and diver tried to stop the engine by stopping the fuel supply usually people do it but without success as burning material was coming in through the air inlet. Finally there was a flashback and flammable liquid ignited to a fire. So don't ignore any of this incident. The common hazard, a tanker trailer tripped up because the rear component was empty first. And if it is not possible to keep the trailer connected to the truck driving unit, the front component should be filled last and emptied first. The rule is very clear but is not being done because of the untrained operator. What I said, the front compartment bit should be filled first, filled last and emptied first. As the normal support cannot alone prevent the trailer from tripping. So things to remember, you should have a checklist with you clear instruction to the driver and of course guidebook how to handle during some accident, spillage, anything happen during transport. So while the transportation of hazardous goods may be by land or sea or waterway, railway, even by air, the sensitivity and risk factor involved in the process require specific precaution to be taken. This includes meticulous packaging, conditioning, specific handling operations, 
during transportation, training and development for persons engaged in the transportation and handling of this category of goods. The sensitivity and the risk factor involving transportation of dangerous goods require specific precaution including multi including multicular packaging and condition in order to address these issues and bring uniformity in the service being provided it is felt that to formulate an indian standard on transportation of dangerous goods earlier it was there but in 2023 recently published an important document. I'll explain you afterwards. What happened during the transport of chemicals? Large amount of chemicals you are taking it can cause hazards to the environment, society and nearby area. Transport is necessary because product consumer is somewhere, producer is somewhere an accident occurring during transport of dangers could lead to catastrophic consequences. So laws and recommendations have to be established to protect the society. But they cannot be effective if you, you I am talking about you, whether you are an employer, worker, transporter or inspection authority, do not share responsibility and follow the existing recommendations and guidelines of transport and storage you have to avoid disabilities. So it is responsibility of everybody to work together to avoid such kind of incident. The hazardous prophecy of product and chemicals should be clearly stated so that people in all stages, let it be loader, unloader, transporters, Transport chain are aware. This information should always follow the goods so the people can recognize the risk, avoid accidental manhandling, and have the right kind of personal protective equipment and disposal in case of leakage. Dangerous food can be transported without causing unnecessary hazard if handled properly. Safety and security culture in every state. Now, the frequently asked questions, <clears throat> this, this will be very handy for you also. Are there restrictions on transport of hazardous chemicals through specific routes and area? Answer I have given, yes. Some routes, tunnels, bridges, areas have been restricted or specific regulation regarding the transportation of hazardous chemicals. Planning your route carefully and ensuring compliance to the local, state and federal transport. This is the answer. How do I properly label mark hazardous chemical container? Hazardous chemical container must be labeled marked according to the regulatory standard. This includes using specific hazard labels, UN symbol, UN number, proper shipping name, failing to label and keep correct can lead to regulatory violations and safety hazards. Can I transport different classes of hazardous chemicals together? You can. Transporting multiple classes of hazardous chemicals together may be allowed under specific conditions, but it must be comply the regulatory guidelines. Compatibility segregation and proper packaging are to be done. It is a critical fact. What are the penalties for non-compliance? I can, can I transport anything? What is the penalty? Non-compliance penalties are very wide, including fines, license suspension, legal consequences. More importantly, non-compliance can lead to accident, injuries, even you can also get injured or environmental damage. Staying compliant is essential for safety and legal reason. 
what is the chemical safety act in india chemical accident emergency planning preparedness and response rules 1996 these rules framed under the environmental protection act 1986 are aimed to prevent and control the chemical accident and assist government in managing the chemical accident and also suggest measure to reduce risk and industrial pocket who regulates chemical in india very very important the regulatory body responsible for overseeing and implementing the indian chemical management system regulation is the central chemical registration authority ccra the ccra plays a vital role in enforcing compliance with the cmra and promoting the safe management of chemical in india what are the chemical regulations 2009 the chemical hazard information and packaging of supply 2009 have been issued came into force april 2009 this regulation concern the identification of harmful properties of chemical communication to the information to user and mix level the regulations was firstly enacted in 1989 by ministry of environment and forest now it is moe fcc climate change also included and later amended 1994 2000 it regulates the manufacture storage and import of hazardous chemical in india this transport hazardous chemical must meet the provision of motor vehicle act 1988 now let us see the status of chemical disaster risk in india india has witnessed the was chemical accident already talk to you because of the missile isosai in italy india continued to witness a series of chemical accident even after bhopal had demonstrated the vulnerability in the country only last decade 130 significant chemical accident happened reported maybe more which resulted into 259 days and 563 number of major injured but these numbers are reported numbers that may be unreported cases also there are about 1861 motor accident, major accident hazard mah unit spread across 301 district and 25 states and three union territories in all zones of countries besides there are thousands of registered and hazardous factories and an organized sector dealing with numerous range of hazardous material posing serious and complex level of disaster risk for chemical so these are the safety initiative if these are all acts <coughs> number of acts has been existing but uh, enforcement is an issue the explosive acts factory acts environmental protection act public liability insurance act many people may not be knowing that insurance is also there in case of accident disaster management act motor vehicle act insect safety act and petroleum act is all in place by central government guidelines are also there but let us look the latest guideline posted on pib delhi on march 6 2023 the bureau of india standard bis the national standard body of india has recently published new guidelines aimed at enhancing safety in the transportation of dangerous goods so very very important i request all of you to download the document have a look on that what are the a uh, major area of recommendation the guidelines known as is 
2023, latest one, <coughs> transportation of dangerous goods guidelines have been formulated under the Transport Service Sectional Committee of BIS and are expected to set a new benchmark for the safe handling of transportation of hazardous material across the country. This is a little bit highlights I am giving with the aim of standardizing the transportation practice. The BIS guidelines will help ensure that all hazardous goods are transported in a safe, secure manner. The transportation of these goods involve the implementation of adequate measures to ensure that <coughs> transit and local security and safety. Whenever dangerous goods are to be transported, certain measures should be taken to ensure that potential risks are absolutely communicated to all who may come on the way of handling the goods. Further provides guidelines, packaging, labeling, marking, handling, each and every aspect of the address. The standard is formulated to provide guidelines for all stakeholders, including the vehicle owner, transport agency, contractor, consigner, consignee, operator, driver, everybody. Everybody can look at this. This is a very compact and latest document. It's content of transport documents, appropriate shipping name, class, UN number, total quantity, name and address of the consignor, consignee, other element, for national authority plus point, ignition temperatures and what is to be done, the waste and declaration certificate, all are things are to be covered during transport. Vehicle requirement, of course, transport by roads, the bulk container, the container, how container should move, the uh, driver training, all certificates, packaging certificates, all these things has to be placed before sending the container of course play card according to transport rules. This is a checklist. You are not going to transport however the checklist I have given you for the sake that somebody is reading he should know what are to be done before starting the journey of transporting as a risk. Uh, the transportation of dangerous goods is controlled and governed by various regulatory systems operating at both at national and international level while formulating the standard assistance has been taken from Central Motor Vehicle Act and international documents and UN model also. Recommendation for transportation of dangerous goods. 22nd edition, the UN model regulation and are given in the legal entity in this document. International agreements, what are they? The European agreement concerning the international carriage of dangerous goods, regulation concerning the international carriage of dangerous goods by rail or ID, international civil aviation organization, technical instruction of the state transport, dangerous goods by air, the international maritime dangerous goods, codes. These are all international agreement. We are signatory to that. Now, this is uh, all over for chemical regulations. Now coming to radioactive, even though it has been, uh, I have already uh, given one lecture, uh, some or the other way. But if you look, if you get this symbol anywhere, in your neighborhood <coughs> or in container, you will be uh, pretty sure that this is carrying radioactive material. These symbols, you should know it. Uh, left side is, is a decent genetic equipment like X-ray equipment. Right side is radioactive material. Both the symbols are used nationally or internationally. So, what you know, more than 1 lakhs packages are being transported annually because it has got tremendous societal value. 
you get the materials even the packages very small small quantities needed not like chemical bulk quantities big tankers the small package small tankers so but adequate protective access so which are the governing document this is ERB NFRTS SC1 revision 1 this is the safety codes that give the all guide lines for transporters, for suppliers, consigner, consignee, truck drivers, everybody. It prescribes the classification, design, test requirement for the reductive material classification of the packages. I'll explain it afterwards. See now, you know, I told you one lakh packages are being transported annually who does this how it can be license can be given for this transport now this is the e-licensing system elora i'm introducing this screenshot i've taken and if you uh, log into this elora system of erv there the licensing system is very very clearly given and that is the online system electronic clearance without moving to the regulatory body they can give clearance the and person get clearance but the main thing is that safety and security has to be ensured then only they will get the license some other parts of the ELORA system the ELORA full form is e-licensing of radiation applications and e-governance initiative by AERB is a web-based applications for automations of regulatory process for various and facilities in India. The objective of this project was to enhance the efficiency and transparency in the regulatory process of ERB. Unlike chemical, ERB is the whole and sole regulators of nuclear. The system is aimed at achieving paperless licensing of radiation facility. Institutes have to register by giving username and password and they can operate on this Elora system sitting at their home. So issuing of renewal of consent or license we call consenting process licensing so on receipt of all application in complete in our surface, there there is a uh, time frame within that a year we will issue the license. They follow certain time frame, and this has been already published in website. So these are all the types of application comes. If you see, the radioactive material is beam for radiotherapy gamma radiation processing facilities, industrial research, medical cyclotone, industrial radiography, diagnostic radiology, gamma irradiated, oil logging, nuclear cages, nuclear medicine, transporter directed material, consumer practices, research of unsealed sources, radio analysis, total 16 application types, now all are given through ELODA. And these are the processing time. I am not reading the number of days processing time within that they will process the application and issue the license provided it is complete in all respect. General aspects of post packaging has to be followed and safety security has to be followed such that theft and sabotage also avoided during the transportation. So, and then contamination, of course radioactive things are uh, always uh, vulnerable for contamination at the surface and people knowingly or unknowingly may touch the surface and get contaminated and that can be carried forward further at different places. So you need to have some acceptable level of contamination and radiation field at the package. A graded approach is being used. So certain packages called accepted package, I have explained it earlier. Next package is called industrial package, they call IP1, IP2, IP3. Then 
other packages are type B and type C. Contamination, how much you should allow, that is also specified and some special form and non special form. You have to material also to be used using these guidelines. There are certain values of A1, A2 which are in line with International Atomic Energy Agency. AERB has also given the table. That table has to be used by the transporters, consigners and consignee. Then only we can transport. One important aspect is transport index. Transport index is defined as a number obtained by dividing the maximum radiation level at 1 meter from the external surface of the package in microsievert per hour by 10. Accordingly, we can category white, yellow 1, yellow 2 and yellow 3. This is a very important definition. By reading the TI value, transport index value, you can easily say what is the total QD content or amount of radioactive material being transported in the package. So this is a 1, a 2 value uh, based on the IEA guidelines and AERB guidelines. I am not going through the details. Uh, this is the transport index. Again, further explain those who are not able to understand what I said in the definition. Just have a look on this diagram. You can easily understand what I said. One meter distance. One meter distance there will be several values from the package. So what we are going to take it? The highest value. 4.5 have been taken in microsievert per hour and that has to be divided by 10. And that value has no unit. It is pure number. Clear? Okay. So now this is the selection of UN numbers accordingly. All directed material before transportation, they have to give a particular specific sub classification number for the material. And this regulation applies to all phases, like it be air transport, ship transport, road transport, or any kind of. Then I already explained to you package can be accepted package where the uh, radioactive symbol is not there at the outer surface but inner surface it will be have then industrial package type 1, 2, 3 mostly we will use industrial packages for transport they are economic and uh, very easy to get it from market they are also called type A package then subsequently type B package and type C package is for more severe accident condition where, where the content of the radioactivity is high like gamma camera even in case of accident or fire, these packages will remain intact and you can retrieve it subsequently. Uh, this is the anatomy of the package. So sources are the red color type left side, then subsequently lock and key, then put it in the another box that is called total packaging and the symbol is outside. So type A package is you know, mostly moderate activities. Type B package is large activities, it can be universally accepted or locally accepted by regulators accordingly, it can be categorized like teletherapy sources, gamma in period resources. Type C package is very very high radioactive content, I told you it is a uh, radioactive uh, radiotherapy or um, industrial radiography sources are transported through that. We want a two value of certain uh, radioactive sources is a 137, and we say 141, cobalt 60. These values have been given maximum allowed. This is SSR 6 is a IEA safety code uh, requirement, and uh, that also you, you can follow it. We also adopt. Uh, this is accepted package. This package is, looks like normal package because there is no data symbol outside and it can uh, uh, travel through a normal mode of transport and external surface uh, is no uh, indicated radioactive but internal surface it will have radioactive symbol. 
additional things requirement uh, if you travel through air because they have to uh, encounter the lowest temperature, highest temperature or low pressure, high pressure accordingly the package design and package uh, uh, you can say the qualification criteria should be taken into account. So this is uh, again uh, how to dispatch type A, type B packages certain uh, criteria has to follow as per the uh, guidelines. This I told you this uh, accepted package this symbol is not needed so that's why cross mark is there. Then category 1 to I am talking about IP1 industrial package the TI value is 0. Clear? Here TI value is 0. This, that means uh, it is of uh, no uh, major concern. And for uh, type 2 EOLO, the TI value should be 1. Okay. And but uh, middle value, if you see, that is on the surface, <coughs> not at 1 meter distance. <coughs> and then uh, category 3 packages, TI value is 10. Clear. And uh, surface, the uh, maximum allowed value is 2 millisievert per hour. We should not allow any package more than this radiation field at the surface, not at one meter distance. So these are the things to be done before doing the actual package. This UN numbers, uh, this uh, consigner address, consigner address, all these things has to be there. So as you go to IP package, or the symbol has to be there. Then type, 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 type B package, more number of information has to be given. Then this is very, very important. As I told you, this ice code for chemicals, this is that tram card, uh, transport emergency management card, which gives the entire information and that will be part and parcel during the transportation. So this has to be they are with the drivers, maybe more than one copy, such that those who are uh, carrying this substance, they can give it to some literate fellow who can read it and he can take emergency action in case of any accident happen to the vehicle. So this is called transport emergency card, trim card. Okay, it's very, very important. Many informations are given and that is an part and parcel of each consignment. And when somebody is opening the package, he has to measure the field and check with the uh, declared data on the package itself. If it's a mismatch, he should not take it. He can send it back to the consignor. So he has to verify the address also and those days also. See, those are opening, before opening, address should be clear and if you are <coughs> opening the package without verifying this, then you become responsible for the package. Then, Atomic Regulatory Board will assume that you are the owner of the package because you have not verified and open it. So, very, very careful while opening such kind of packages. So, receiving package check the packet clearly whether all the symbols are there ti value is mentioned and all other crossway so it can handle it without any fear because the radiation levels at the surface is not of concern it has been taken care before packaging itself so these are the reportable event Note down, note down it very carefully such that you remember if this thing happened then <coughs> it, it has to be reported to CMG DAE and Atomic Energy Regulatory Board within India, not IEA. Okay. What are then incorrect address or delivery if packages was already received? Incorrect level or transport index, this is one, this is two. Radiation level in excess of more than 2 millisievert per hour, the surface, 3, package damage, leaking or evidence of tampering, 4, 
wipe test where we call it uh, 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 surface contamination checking reading is more than four pecarel per centimeter square this is five and loss shipment this six you have to remember because very very important it has to be reported to the regulatory body if any of this incident is found during handling receiving or sending the package now we have <coughs> learned about the two regulations and transport one is chemical and radioactive and let us have a summary and compare so this is that <coughs> requirement regulation enforcement frequency of accident consequence and who is the regulator so <coughs> if you remember several rules and multiple agencies are there for chemical but there is a single agency and they are AERD okay enforcement is not strong is weak but is very very strong because consequence of radioactive contamination and fear is more so it is a very strong enforcement is there frequency of accident is very high regularly you are facing the chemical accidents during road transport but it is very very low it happened once or twice but immediately the sources have been recovered consequences depends on nature maybe fatal sometimes it is a chlorine it is petroleum you, you are with different things. can be quickly contained and may not be fatal this once radioactive material you know because everything this can be the cordon up because it, it will not uh, cause havoc within the area only contamination contamination is controlled it can easily be managed and the regulators more than one regulators are there here is a single regulator board with this comparison tables i thank you very much and wish you good luck